for news that affects you. Depend on The Jared Goodell Show. 7.35 on a Thursday morning. Good morning to you, Jared Goodell. On your radio, waking you up. Getting you informed on all the stories you need to know to be the most informed person at the office today at the dinner table tonight. Uh, Talking about the tragedy that occurred yesterday in Virginia, the reporter and her videographer shot on live television, their guest shot uh, as well. Uh, The reporter, the videographer died at the scene. Uh, That guest uh, lived uh, and she is now in stable condition. What motivated this gunman? Well, we know he had a he had a grudge. He didn't feel good about himself. But why did he post a video? Why did he take video in the first place on his phone of the shooting? And why did he post it online at just about the same time when he sent a 23-page manifesto to ABC News? The mind of this killer, obviously a psychotic one. Rusty Chadwick joins us now, the former first assistant to the Hillsborough County Attorney. Now in private practice at the law firm Chadwick, Fercano, and Weber in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, Rusty Chadwick, good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me, even under these circumstances. It's too yeah. bad we have to talk about things like this. Uh, and thanks for coming on this morning. Uh, this is a a very sad story, and, and it is sad that we have to talk about things like this. Uh, this uh, 24-year-old reporter, Allison Parker, her 27-year-old videographer, Adam Ward, shot on live TV. Uh, and... We all saw the video uh, of what occurred on live TV yesterday, but then the shooter uh, did some very interesting things, things that uh, I don't know if we've seen before in this country. Uh, He was tweeting after the murder uh, about why he did it, about the the personal grievances he had with his victims. And then he posted a video, which he took on his cell phone. He posted that on his Facebook page, told people to go and watch it. Has... Uh, has there ever been a case like this uh, in this country, Rusty? No, I don't. Not that it certainly has reached this level of attention. Uh, there was a case years ago in Nashua where people found things after the fact. This is pre-Twitter, of course. So I think this is something that's been building. There was, there was a boyfriend that they killed a girlfriend, and after the fact, is my memory, they found like a blog um, where he said, this is what I'm going to do. But we've we've gone well past that ability now to do everything live. And so this may be something I hopefully we don't see again, but this is this is what we have and I think part of the problem turn is people watch it. Right. Is it uh you know, I, I, I struggle with that part. Um I I struggle with whether or not to watch it, uh and whether or not people should watch it, whether or not I should play clips here on the radio. Uh because uh, we, we have a serious problem, I believe, in the country with mental illness. And uh, when, when you read the story, when you, when you know about this guy, when you, you, when you read everything that we now know about him, uh, he obviously was a very deranged man. Uh, and I think that it's important for people to know that. He was a crazy guy. Uh, he had obvious problems. Uh, so I struggle sometimes with, with whether or not I should watch it, whether or not I should be viewing this. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is, that? is this something that people should watch? Is this something that people should inform themselves about so they know just how crazy the world is right now? Well, I, I don't think we need to... Uh, <laughs> I think everybody's in agreement on that part. And I'll tell you, if, if I hadn't received a call from you and said, hey, Rusty Chatter, if you want to... Would you come on and talk about this? I would purposely have not watched that video because those things clutter your mind. I did an awful lot of work with child pornography cases. I've had torture cases that have been videotaped and things that I've had to watch, and you cannot get those things out of your head. Even with, it's like it needs to take a mental toothbrush to try to clean it out. And I think, I worry we become immune to that. I can tell you that uh, working with parents whose children have been abused, I always told them, do not talk about things in front of them. Do not watch what they see on TV. Um, So even the adults, I think we have to be careful and would worry about protecting our children from what we even talk about, never mind what they have access to, whether we want them to or not. Um, and so that, that is the great, great struggle uh, that we go through. And the mental illness part, Jared, the, the New Hampshire court system is, is slow to change. We don't have the services like we, there are in Massachusetts, for instance, but there is a, a building 
and, and much better even the last five years uh, to help people who have them and, and to try to work with them and treat them separate from the traditional way of dealing with people who come into the court system. But I don't know how you figure out how to deal with someone like this. And the bigger story, the much more important story, is the background. Right. The signs that now everybody will clearly see they missed. Let, let's talk about those signs. Uh, obviously, this guy uh, we heard from the general manager of the TV station, uh, WDBJ, that he had to be fired last year, that he always had problems with uh, coworkers, that he was a difficult person, an unhappy person. Uh, he would sue his employers quite often, file EEO complaints. Uh, he... He often said that he felt that uh, people uh, were were racist uh, towards him, that they, they didn't accept him because he was a black man. Um, and that uh, is a big motivation for this shooting. He wrote in his manifesto that uh, the Charleston shoot him, uh, shooting sent him over the edge. What are some signs that people can look for uh, in the workplace or uh, with family and friends uh, to, to prevent this sort of tragedy from happening? I think one of the, one of the biggest things in... in and I don't know what you can do to prevent this, ultimately. And I think people will overreact, at least for a while, because they don't want something like this to happen again. So they'll, people who would never do this may get pigeonholed a little bit. But the biggest thing is when someone is not making sense, we all tend to just ignore them. It's easier to walk away. When you know someone, you know, it goes like this. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 27. And then there are people just ignore it. And sometimes we have to speak out to someone, to family, to friends, get people together and say, look, you are not making sense. You need, you know. And the idea is it's almost as if we encourage people by ignoring them because that just proves they're right because nobody's challenging them. If that, if that makes sense. Um, but it's much easier, of course. For family, harder for family, I suppose, but much easier for friends and coworkers just to ignore it. Well, let's talk about the possibility of copycats. Uh, we we see mm-hmm. this often, where uh, you know a crime occurs like this. It's all over the national media. It's all over social media. People see it, and there's somebody out there who also is deranged. Uh, they have crazy fantasies. Um, they they aren't happy with themselves, and they're on the verge of committing a crime like this. And then they see the attention uh, that that this guy is getting. Uh, are, are, is there any worry about a copycat attack? And if there is, do you think that, that future attacks like this will include tweeting afterwards and taking video of it and posting that? Look, there, there's nothing to stop anybody from, from doing things. I had a case years ago, a very simple theft case in, in, that we took care of. And five or six years later, uh, I came across a blog my client was keeping and in bragging about all the things he got away with after we took care of his case in court. It's, a, it's human nature to talk about things, to brag about things, and now that you can do it live, it's not so much the ability to do it live as much as it is the attention, because you have a guarantee. Look, at, he's got, he has a guaranteed audience. ABC News, he took his fax. I mean, here's a guy that's tweeting, but yet faxes something to ABC News, right. and we are all talking about it. Um, And so that's the danger of the copycat. The best thing we can do is to grieve, but our human nature, our instincts, are, of course, to figure out, you know, the why now. How did it happen? The the other thing that really having... (laughs) Thank you for making me look at this video, Jared, because when I did, that what stunned me was it was a video game quality in that he appears to hold the gun up a couple of times and nobody sees him because he's behind the cameraman. But I, I don't play shooter video games, but obviously I am around teenagers, and they do. And, and watching that, it, that was a very eerie aspect of it um, to me, that, he, they, that and, you know, he seemed to be mimicking what you might see in a video game. And right. that, that will, of course, raise yet another discussion that we keep having about any sort of link. Uh, just a comment on that video, and what I noticed was he raised the weapon, his weapon, mm-hmm. and uh, he, and it seems that he put it down, uh, waiting mm-hmm. for the camera to pan back over. Uh, I think that he wanted the camera to catch what he was doing, um, 
I mean, that's just my analysis of what I saw. He, he seemed to deliberately wait until the camera came back over. Uh, we've got about uh, 60 seconds left. Uh, already a call right now from uh, several top politicians. The president yesterday, uh, Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton, uh, saying yesterday that we need better gun control. Uh, it is my belief uh, that the, the common denominator here is not guns, uh, but in fact, uh, mentally ill people. We, we see crime every day where murder uh, occurs, that, and there's no gun involved. Uh, up in, in Maine, there was uh, the, the the person who stabbed a woman uh, in the grocery store. That woman died. Uh, the, and, and there are obviously mental issues there. Uh, can, what are your thoughts on, is this a gun problem? Do we need stricter gun laws? Do we need better background checks? Or is this a mental illness problem? Well, this is, this is a mental this is an individual problem with each person who develops a mental illness. Or, and, and I don't want that's a broad term, Jared. This is someone whose brain went off wire and clearly focused irrationally and, and figured he'd have a national audience. I think if he couldn't have access to a gun, he would have done something very similar. You know, we keep, you know, it's the old guns don't kill people, video games don't kill people. The first murder that we have, you know, in our cultural history didn't occur with a gun. You know, Cain, Cain and Abel, there wasn't well, any gun violence back then. That's not going to stop it. It's people looking at the people who really shouldn't have guns, and that's usually well after the fact. Rusty Chadwick, the former first assistant to the Hillsborough County attorney now in private practice at the law firm Chadwick, Vercano, and Weber in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, Rusty, thanks so much for your insight this morning, uh, and uh, have a great day. You too. Thanks, George. All right. So more on this story to come. Uh, the uh, words uh, from a reporter at an ABC affiliate in Virginia will join us next. Good morning. It's 747 on WFEA.